Hi, this is Edward Nowatka for PublishingPerspectives.com. I'm here at the Digital Book World Conference with Larry Kirschbaum, the founder of LJK Literary Management and a former publisher. And uh, Larry, you, in your your recent talk today, you described a, um, a sort of blue sky panacea scenario that offered a great opportunity for the global publishing business. And would you recount that for me? Uh, I, I have a a television model in mind where no matter where you are in the world, you turn on your device, whatever it may be, whether it's a cell phone or a Blackberry or a TV, Yes. and there appears the text of the book that you're looking for. And whatever machinations go on technologically are all, in a sense, behind the screen, so that it's very easy for a reader whether you're in Finland or Germany or New York, to read a book in the language that you want with great ease. Yes. That, to me, should be the end goal of our industry. That should be the end game that we're looking at. Absolutely. And now you, you also discussed global distribution um, and seeing that as an opportunity for uh, large-scale American publishers and the conglomerates, I'm assuming, who have global businesses. Right. Um, can you explain that a little more detail, how, how that is an opportunity? Because a lot of people see that as a challenge. Well, the, the fact is, first of all, English as a second language, or as a first language, uh, although I question what goes on in Britain, uh, whether it's a first or second language, uh, English has, of course, tremendous uh, uh, global potential, which has not been reached in places like India and China uh, and Germany, and et cetera. Uh, secondly, uh, the translation opportunities of uh, many uh, English language books uh, are enormous. A, a country like communist China is hugely uh, interested in business books, yes. for example. This is true throughout Asia. Uh, so I think publishers can use the digital distribution potential yes. to bring uh, more and more of their books in varying languages around the globe. Right. And they should not be bound thinking in terms of the American domestic uh, market because the real growth is going to come, I believe, from, uh, from, the, uh, from the translation world and from the world English. Uh, opportunity. Right. The real markets are in the uh, growth areas, Brazil, uh, Yeah, well, China. we all talk about BRIC, uh, you know, Brazil, yeah. uh, Russia, India, China, but there are many more, too, all sure. of Asia. In, in aggregate. When in you aggregate. Take uh, we're talking about growth, I think, over the next 10 years that could, uh, that could dwarf the growth domestically. And as an agent, you talked about the uh, the challenge to um, territorial rights, and you offered a solution which suggested to look at world English and then as individual translations. Right. Is that uh, feasible? Yeah. yeah, I think that if you want to simplify it, uh, let the English rights be world, yep. but have individual uh, translation rights for each appropriate country. That's a good way, I think, of avoiding the slippage where, uh, a, a, say, Great Britain might be poaching on the rights of a, a U.S. Uh, uh, publisher. This is the open market scenario. Yeah, it's sort of an open market scenario in terms of uh, world English, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a more traditional scenario in terms of uh, translation. Sure, and for big, for for certain authors, there's there's genuine money to be made in that translation yeah, market. Oh, absolutely. Not for all. The the translation market is growing uh, faster than practically any other segment of our business. Uh, you know, the uh, one of our great exports still is our major authors, the the Jim Pattersons and and uh, the Stephanie Myers and so on. Uh, because our films uh, are so popular yeah. uh, overseas and because our culture is so popular overseas, it stands to reason that books are going to be a, a great export opportunity, which we have not exploited. Thank you very much, Larry. appreciate your comments. Okay.